Well, folks, it is great to do pops again. Let's do live with Rob Whiteout. <laughs> there is so much to talk to. And of course, Rob and I, we chat all the time. And we have stuff we haven't talked about that we should talk about. We have uh, Nobody, which I think we both love. We have the Peacemaker yeah. Show, where it's like a mid-season break. Uh, we want to, Rob wants to wish R.I.P. to Meatloaf. I think that came up. Oh, absolutely. Stuff that we yeah. definitely want to talk about. And uh, yeah, there's always something else. I got some new fan nonsense that I think we should try to run through if we get a chance to. So, Rob, my friend, you're doing well? I am. Can I give a shameless plug? Yeah, of course. My daughter, Mackenzie, seventh grade, first one chosen for the JV team, not the junior JV, but the JV softball team at school. The wow. coach said, you're one of the only seventh graders chosen. Usually it's 10th, 11, and 12th for JV. That's amazing. Yes. Congratulations to her. That's so all awesome. Her, uh, her reputation precedes her. Yeah, that's great. That's great to hear. Absolutely yeah. fantastic news. So, And they won the championships this weekend in Apopka. Wow. That is awesome, man. I'm glad it's, um, you know, I'm glad she's enjoying it, finding her space. Um, I'm glad to see other people appreciate it. And it's what you always hope for your kids, man. Just find some success and happiness, build their confidence, and maybe pave the road to greater things later on. So, yeah, man. We talked about some stuff this week. Where do you want to jump to first? Any of those topics? If we had a little wheel, we could spin it, but that always like that never ends the way I want it to. So, I don't want to do that. Well, so. do we want to start on a high note or end on a high note? You, know, you, I, you probably want to end with me ranting or you want to start with me ranting. I, I think that's kind of where you want to go. It's like, it, it's kind of like um, one of those things where do I rant now or do I rant later? <laughs> It's like, well, those. let's do nobody first because you know, we you both know, like I'm... that. We both liked it. It's great. Yeah. Oh my God. What a movie. I was just impressed. The guy, um, I know you said he was from uh, Better Call Saul Better, or something like that. Yep. Yeah, Better Call Saul. And uh, oh, I don't like that. I'll go back to the other way. Uh, Better Call Saul. I, believe, I, I don't know. I never watched all of Breaking Bad. So um, yeah. Anyway, he's from no, that sort of uh, universe of things. He's done some other minor things. This was a really big step for him. He co-produced wow. it. Uh, Russian director, Russian writer. Uh, so nobody basically sets up a everyday guy, just like me and Rob, going to work every day. Literally, the rut is placed perfectly in um, uh, scene after scene of his routine, and then suddenly there's a home invasion that goes, uh, what you think is going to go awry, and he shows a restraint that leads to his uh, son getting punched and all this, and people kind of mocking him for his last of lack of masculinity then he gets enraged later on when you start to discover that they took uh not just some money but also something that was important to his daughter and it becomes a situation where he's trying to uh, get all that back but also ends up in a, in a fight scene uh he doesn't actually mean to kill the person right they die after after the fact so, right after. he tried to save them with the um with the, the neck trick right hollywood yeah. loves that kind of stuff yeah. And uh, anyway, so it turns out to be Russian mob and he ends up in this big mess where they won't let this go. And it becomes basically a John Wick type film, but with so much more heart and character for me. So uh, let's start at the beginning. How did you, didn't you, I, what do you think of this uh, setup? The, the fast editing, building his rut, his family routine, just yeah. this really a beaten down. I know you felt man. bad for him. Yeah, you felt bad for him. And then, you know, well, the very first scene is him sitting there in the police station. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It opens and closes with the same shot. Yeah. And you're like wondering, like, what is going on here? And then it cuts to the the monotony of his everyday life and just day after day. And it, the one point I got to the thing, I'm like, why doesn't she just remind him about the trash the night before? put it out the night before oh, yeah i know but, but i don't know about you and again i don't know that i don't know that i feel this way regularly but you're going to go through sort of seasons and bouts of your job and your life routine and you just kind of feel like that yeah you, know, absolutely. You, you look you wake up and you look at the calendar and you're like holy cow it's the 25th january is almost gone like you you start to realize that that rut is eating up so much of your time in your life and they they capture all of that really relatable Completely, completely relatable then you get to obviously uh you know the conflict and you start to get little tiny hints right he like knew uh details about the intruders he knew about the revolver and then you get to this scene where he's trying to track down this clue that he has this tattoo 
Yeah, they, they they pick up on a little tattoo he has on his arm. The old the old the old vet does, yeah, on, on his wrist, I guess, right? And yeah. I double checked that tattoo because I wanted to find out, and they just had to do with, I guess, the playing cards are like the worst cards you can get if you play poker. Like I guess it basically it's like you fold off you fold immediately with that kind of combination or something. So again, right. it's the uh the last hope, no win person. And right. obviously there's allusions to the military and all that. That scene, here's the thing. This movie is so much more show than tell. I'm sick of Disney Plus and some of these shows where all they do is talk, 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 talk. They don't realize they're in a dramatic or action piece, let alone a superhero film. Nobody is all about showing you things and letting you just pick up on little nuances and little tricks rather than have to have some sort of spiel. They could easily have had some spiel or flashback sequence or some sort of nonsense. Sure. This was, this but it would have ruined so it. Much, it would, this was so much more effective. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just right down to the, uh, you know, he's in, on the bus, he's walking by that girl. He's like, she's going to make it home safe tonight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in his mind, that's what his focus was. You know, yeah. uh, it was just start to finish. I can't find one thing other than the annoying singing that what the Russian guy. Um, but I think that I was by design a little bit, right? Because it's just showing he cannot sing, but he's so powerful and rich. They even let him get in front right. of people like nobody's going to say anything to that guy. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it was just start to finish, just one thing after another. It was just, I don't think I found one moment in the entire movie that I wasn't paying attention to it. And like I told you, I even had to go back and rewatch it because I, I know I missed stuff because it was just some things went so quickly. And uh, I think to, one of my favorite spots was when he... Uh, he was leaving after he burned the house and he's looking over at that, his neighbor's uh, mm -hmm. car. And he's like, yeah, okay. You know, you can see the, the wide roll. Okay. I'm going to take that card, tonight, you know, because yeah. I can, just because yeah. I can. Yeah. Um, Christopher Lloyd plays the dad and has a couple of great scenes that set up the end. And what was interesting, and I didn't catch this, uh, dad has a tattoo too. Did you catch the dad? The dad has the tattoo. I did not, but I'll have to look at that next time we watch it because uh, yeah. Dylan wants to watch it. So yeah, absolutely. Um, the film is violent and some cursing, but it's not. There's no nudity. There's nothing graphic. It's never profane or gross or anything like that. It's um, if you if your kids have watched John Wick, even though it's rated R, of course. It's, yeah. it's it's sort of like a less a less intense version of that, but almost like a more realistic version. And he is so beat up and battered regularly. It just is so believable. It's literally what, what you're going to hear me complain about when I get to Hawkeye. You're going to hear what we complain about all these movies and shows. They don't have an ounce of effort to try to make things believable. We're in a superhero. We're in a fictitious movie. That's not what I mean. I mean, it's like when you watch Die Hard, you can believe that John McClane is getting beat up and battered. Because if he didn't have scratches and stuff on it, it would just be absurd. You, just, you couldn't you sure. couldn't relate to the film. This movie was so, as you say, it was so perfectly relatable. Yeah, absolutely. And it, uh, I love the surprise on the wife's face when he pops open, when he puts him in the in the basement, he pops open oh, the, the key. Yeah, he yeah, the door. And she had no idea, you know, no idea. So it was just... Um, and there's a quick shot. Keep... There's a quick shot, right, of them holding hands. Like, it's like, yeah. I'm here for you. You're here for me. I got you. Right. They cover the little girl's face. And then, of course, you know, uh, and again, if this was a big budget film, let's say Disney or Marvel or whatever, you both know there'd be some sort of, you know, conversation with the son. You know, there'd be some sort of like, we're going to overtell his backstory, whatever. We're just going to keep having right. conversations uh, because that's how we have relationships. Whereas this one, it's like, there's no time for that right now. I got to figure out how to save my family. And then later on, you just know he's taking care of business. And it was just, I, I love the fact that we didn't have to have everything spoon fed. This was literally the most underrated film of last year, in my opinion. This was so, so yeah. cool. And I honestly, I, I mean, Dylan had mentioned it, but I really didn't give it a second thought till you and I were talking about it. And, uh, you know, you gave me a little bit more info on it. I was like, oh, okay. But like, to down, you know, going back to the, the the conversations with the son, even his military career, he completely downplayed because the son needed to do a report with a veteran. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And he's like, oh, no, I was just an auditor. I, I was a nobody. We didn't do right. anything. Right. You but know, his world, what that really meant was yeah, like, exactly. he's was the last exactly guy you want to see. That was right. such like, a great line. He would have millions of stories, but I uh, can't tell you any of them. Yeah. You know, go see your grandfather, go see your uncle. Yeah. So, and, um, you know, just even like the, the the uncle coming up to him with the gun in the, in their workplace saying, you know, here, take care of my sister. You know, I don't know. It was just a phenomenal movie. I just, I, I can't, I don't have anything bad to say about it. Christopher Lloyd touching on that. Perfect dad. <laughs> it was so good. And by the way, that gun ends up in the fridge, which he used right, exactly. to see. It sets up stuff. They did such a, they didn't really leave a whole lot. Now there was a couple of shots of them making different weapons. I don't remember them being used or, or they went through so fast. So I think it's like, yeah, they, they were, he, he created, he made some, uh, into rifles. He put some, uh, some, uh, steel, purged yeah, steel, like steel rebars in them. I think he, yeah, I, yeah. I think he used like nails to make like a nail bomb, but I don't think I saw the nail bomb go off. But anyway, he, there's a few things like that, but yeah. it was really, really good. He used that one in the, uh, where the, all the money was at okay. and he, they were in the hallway. He rolled okay. it down the hall. Yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, we both give nobody a must see if you're into any of that sort of action Absolutely. shoot 'em up stuff. This movie was so underrated. Great film. I heard a few people praising it as, on the list of short things last year that were really, really good. I didn't get a chance to see it in the theater. It finally dropped somewhere where I could watch it. I called you, I text you right away. I says, You're not gonna believe this movie. I, I like you, I didn't want to put it down. It was so much fun. And uh, you know, there are very distant thoughts of a sequel. You know, those kinds of things. We'll see. We'll see. I doubt Hollywood has I would, I would be down for it. It's a big shoe to fill to come up with a sequel. I agree. Um, but I think it's the John Wick people. Like, I think it's, these are like, oh, yeah. yeah, this is, this is, the, these are the people that are connected to like that universe. Now, they're not the same studio, so it's not going to be an overlap or anything like that. But it's not, right, like, right. these are not people that are like sort of like haphazardly taking follow up films lightly. So I would say no, if there's any, if there's any chance, they would, they'd probably do okay. There was a great attention to detail yes. in the movie. I mean, just even like someone who is familiar with guns, familiar with things like that, you know, just the detail, you know, was just definitely not a Disney movie. I wanted you know, to see or, Jake. I can't wait for Jake to see it. I don't, he had never oh my gosh, I can't either. seen it or not. I'd love to see what Jake had to say about some of that. Because one of the things, yeah. so when I wrote my book, one of the things so I went to him and I was like getting different names and different weapons. So, Cause I want to try to find something kind of exotic. So a lot of those things are real guns or real weaponry and things that, you know, I ran through somebody who really was into it. And I feel like the filmmakers were down that rabbit hole as well. And really, yeah. really just did a great job. So let's shift gears to um, uh, Peacemaker where <laughs> you and I might disagree a little bit. I will say um, I love Peacemaker in the Suicide Squad. I'm not a John Cena fan. I really have not ever really been a John Cena fan, but I did enjoy him in uh, Bumblebee. Right. And I've seen yeah, a few roles. Be. I've seen a few roles where I thought he was okay. Obviously, this whole thing with Fast and the Furious and bending the knee to China has really turned off a lot of people, myself included. But he was really one of the highlights in that film because it was almost like a, a spoof. It took they took a character that was really, I thought, pretty bland and forgettable in DC comics and turned him into like a spoof of like a captain America, you know, right. Uh, I'll, I'll peace at all costs for every man, woman, and child I have to kill to achieve peace was just this great moniker that he would keep repeating. Right. And then the over the, over the top shootouts and things like that. So to have his own series, it seemed a little strange to have it sort of put together so quickly and it gets off. It's a little, it's definitely cheeky. Um, I feel like they're trying to be the boys. I don't know if you've watched that on, on Amazon yep. Prime. They have yep. the boys. I feel like it's trying to be the boys in some ways. Um, not quite, the, not coming close. Not even close. But the first problem I have with the first three episodes, I really don't care much about the characters. Uh, all these side characters, the secondary characters, to me, they're just all disposable. I could care less about any of them. Even the dad at that point, I just don't care. Um, they're just sort of like, cardboardish fill a role quirky lines cliche strong woman cliche nerdy guy cliche you know black leader is going to have some sort of weird secret that he's he's trying to do or whatever okay fair enough episode four though was at least interesting 
you know, we get into the racism stuff. We get into the dad. It was better. Cena's character is like broken. Now he cries multiple times in this show. In right. the early parts, it doesn't make any sense. In that episode, it is really done well. The over the top music and scenes where he's dancing, I'm sick of all of that. That's a huge negative for him. I'm just so over James. James Gunn's got a great reputation with picking songs and music. And of course, I love, you know, perfect hair, rock metal. It's, I'm good with all that. So I don't know what your thoughts are on kind of like that dichotomy of how I, because I'm very conflicted about the first three episodes versus episode four. I would say it puts me in sort of like, because we're like in the mid season, there's eight episodes. Right. I feel like I'm kind of in like this C to C minus phase, because at least they got away from the D that I felt like the first three episodes were just, I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't, I, right. it, it, if I had missed a few more episodes, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. That's how that's kind of got, but I will, I will say, vigilante becoming relevant took too long and it right, was yeah. good it was good to see a character almost like he had, it, he become more interesting than peacemaker at times until we get into some of that drama so what are your right. thoughts on uh, peacemaker as a whole well overall i want to like it but there's so many different pieces of it that i'm just um i'm just turned off on with it you know there's so many unnecessary vulgarities in it um, you know, down to, you know, how he's singing into the the vibrator and, you know, there's just those kind of things I feel weren't necessary to have in there. They don't make, so, they, they, to like, me, they're not funny, right? I mean, I, I can not understand funny if they work, but they don't work. None of them work. I, I, I'm finding very yeah. little. So that, that this, this show went from something that, okay, I'll give you a good example. Okay, Netflix Punisher. Violent, but clean violent, if that makes any sense. Sure. I could sit there with Dylan. Mm -hmm. I can sit there with Dylan and we could watch the show. I can't let him anywhere near this. I've already told him you're not allowed to watch this show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because it's just the between the nudity and the vulgarity could have been the story could be told without that. That's just James Gunn, you know, doing something just to, to for the shock value. Let me give let me get let me get the people that might be watching an example. So there's a fan girl, like he he has to he has to tie up a, a couple to get out of his apartment building. And she's basically a fan girl because it's John Cena, so he's hot. So later on, they're trying to silence them too. So they set it up that she's basically gonna get to sleep with him. This could have been a funny scene instead of a nude scene if they just had a scene where he's in bed and you see the vigilante guy sitting next to him. So you think that they're in bed together because they've had this like bro ship nonsense, which seems kind of homoerotic, but instead you see her climb up from underneath or whatever. And it would have just kind of been a funny, you could have done it in a funnier way to imply the sex instead of having the, the gratuitous nudity that it didn't really add anything. It's fine. If people are into the nudity, I, I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is they're too busy distracted doing all these random things and I'm with you. They don't ever hit close to a bullseye for me. Very rarely is anything am I laughing about. No, no. And I, you know, that's probably the biggest uh, thing that I, I don't like about the series. Um, you know, it could potentially develop into a good story without all that nonsense. Um, but again, you know, you have these characters like the dad and, you know, some of the teammates that are helping him like that, the the one guy, what's he called, an economist or something like that. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't remember. His name. Um, you know, those characters you know, we, are unnecessary, actually. But um, I, don't, I don't even mind that they're there. But him, they're just so forgettable and interchangeable. They're yeah, so, they're, they're so vanilla. Like he's, it, it's not as though you would see the economist guy and think, oh, I wonder what he does. It's right. so clear he's like the nerdy, nerdy computer guy, and it's obviously right, a exactly. strong female woman in leather. It's, you know, it's just, it, it's so ridiculously very cliche. cliche. Yeah. Com compare that to the Suicide Squad, which is where there was birthed out of. We fell in love with characters called Polka Dot Man and Rat Catcher. That right. took skill in art. He didn't bring any of that to this. I, to me, that that's what no. I, how I feel anyway. No. And, you know, I mean, I'm not a big John Cena fan, fan but I think, um, you know, I could see where... You know, I could start to like the character if it went into a little bit different direction. 
I don't understand why if we were four episodes in, we know very little and the main character knows very little about the butterflies and the thing that we're allegedly after. The actual right. antagonist right. of the show, we know so little that I don't feel vested interest. And I don't, I don't, and because of that, I don't feel like there's really any, there's nothing on the line. Like, I don't know if people can die or not. I don't know how they die, when they die, how long they have. If it gets, if, if someone gets affected, how long do they have? We have no frame of reference of rules. Remember like Walking Dead. The first thing Walking Dead would do was set up, you know, if you got bit, if you got this, this is kind of how long you would have. These would be the symptoms. This is what right. it would look like. You immediately knew timelines and fear and anxiety and stress, characters you would like or didn't like. This show, you could have had a butterfly of somebody. You have no idea what they be. We don't know anything halfway through the show. This is the same problem that we, we've talked about repeatedly with other shows. So that's part of it too, because I agree with you. I think Cena's character, and he's not the worst part of the show by any stretch of no, imagination. No, not at all. No, no, no. It's the writing and this obsession with these musical sequences. Oh, they're so oh, the awful. opening. I almost I almost didn't make it past the opening. It was so silly. And it's fine if they want to do the dance number stuff. That's fine. I, I, I actually I'm shocked. I thought that was going to be opening to the series and not their regular credits. The fact that it plays every single episode, it's almost like please yeah. hit skip. How fast can I hit skip? Yeah, I'm done with all that. It's it's bad when you know that I'd rather watch Avengers on Broadway. No, 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 watch, no. I can't go that far. That okay. <laughs> I will never go that way. Oh, Avengers on Broadway <laughs> is just, you had to go there. It's like you're, you're just <laughs> sticking the knife in my chest. Oh, it was so bad. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I will say this. Favorite character in the show might be the eagle. I like the eagle. is cool. I I'm like kind of liking Vigilante, though, after episode four. Vigilante was... No, Vigilante was really good in episode four. Vigilante may have like almost like saved the whole show yeah. because it it, it kind of tied together the one part of the story that we kind of knew, a piece right. that we didn't know, brought it all together into this kind of big mix. My problem now is they've spent all this time with butterflies and all this sort of what are they like, you know, vampireish, you know, insect things. They don't even now look like insects. This... They look like uh, like some kind of uh, metal object or something that flies yeah, around. Like, I don't know. Anyway. But now we have this crazy racist dead white dragon nonsense. I feel like we're going to get derailed yeah. down that rabbit hole is what I fear. So, all right. So mixed bag on, on Peacemaker. I think we both agree. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not very good either. And if you liked it in Suicide Squad, you may not, you know, some people right. are it's definitely not kid friendly. Definitely not kid friendly. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, not at all. Well, it's, it's these I know it's the same, but sometimes... not like, Titans was yeah. the same way. Titans was like very quick to be like, nope, not in it for, for kids. Yeah. My friend, we had a rough week last week, and you you were like, same day, what happened? We lost Louie Anderson, which I'm going to say it. I would have thought he was already gone, man. I got to be honest. I thought yeah. with the family feud curse, we already lost. Well, apparently he had a show. No, he, he was like the, the lead role in a show where he played uh, some matriarch, huh. you know. Did not know based, that. The character was based off his mom, believe it or huh. not. Interesting. Called Bakers or something like that. Huh. Um, I'm not really sure, or I don't know the name of it. I know it began, I thought it began with a B, but I could. I don't want to look it up. But Tell apparently, he, you know, he was doing really well with that, you know. So, but he had cancer, you right. know. So that's that's what did him in. But then you know we have meatloaf. And that was the yeah. biggest thing, man. And people were really, and, and you were, you were really, you were really oh, shaking over all that, man. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, meatloaf's oh. heydays was. Uh, the uh, 80s and uh, 90s, you know, that was his yeah. big uh, time. And that was, uh, you know, I graduated 85. So, I mean, that was right in the mix of it. So, uh, uh, do you have any like interesting memories? Did you ever go see him in concert or anything like that? Or I did not. I did yeah, not. I unfortunately. Any, yeah, I don't have any um, memories either of that kind of stuff. So, no. Um, you remember? I've only, seen a, I've only seen a handful of people in concert. I've seen Tom Petty a number of times. Finally got to see Kiss when I was 36. I've liked him since I was six. And I saw B.B. King on the uh, 80th birthday tour, which was phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. You saw B.B. King. That's that's super good. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, I, I have to tell you that um, one of the funniest things to me, um, we were talking about, you know, Meatloaf and, he, you know, he would dabble with acting and that kind of thing. These, this is the shots from his, you know, Rocky Horror. 
Right, right. Now, have you ever watched, because this is the photos that I found, because I was reminiscing, and this photo right here, um, this one too, basically. Have you ever watched My Name is Earl? Um, only looks exactly like the brother in this show. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, he looks just like that. It's kind of freaked me out. I'm like, whoa, it looks just like the brother from My Name is Earl. So him and Meatloaf was fun. Uh, having him in, you know, Rocky Horror. Because Rocky Horror for us would have been when we were really young. So, right, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like growing up with the Rocky Horror shenanigans and being a part of our lives. And, of course, yeah. the uh, the music that he did. I, I'm not, not going to pretend that I'm some sort of big Meatloaf fan. But I will tell you that there was respect. He's a big mammal, man. And they do know how to rock. He knew how to have a good time. And the concerts were, from what I understand, just extraordinary and a lot of fun. And sure. uh, world I mean, he paid of, for it in uh, his later years. He paid for it in his later years. He had a lot of back sure. issues, a lot of health issues. But, you know, he, he lived every moment, even even up till he died. I mean, he re recorded a video. Um, I saw it on uh, one of the social medias. It was uh, a couple of weeks. He was getting ready to go for surgery or something. Hmm. You know, so I mean, he up till then he was ready ready to uh, come out. He actually had a um, a uh, kind of like a reality show in the works where it was based off of "I'll Do Anything for Love." It was kind of like going to be like a funny uh, show where he had couples try to do different uh, you know humorous tasks um, huh. based off of that. I would do anything for love, but uh, yeah, so that was sounded like it would have been pretty uh, uh, family friendly. Well, definitely, you know, fun. Like, let's, let's let's have a good time and not take ourselves so seriously. You know what I mean? So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was um, it was a little weird seeing that. Um, I didn't see no. a lot of other films that I'm a bit that I knew. You mentioned Roadhouse. He's not listed as being in Roadhouse. I'm not her shoe who we're talking about. I remember him in Leap of Faith, which is a Steve Martin movie. I don't know if you remember this or right. not. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, Fight Club, Bob Polson. Remember Bob Polson? Oh, I don't remember seeing him now. You do? No, no. Oh, let me pull that up. I'll show you. I'll I didn't see up. Fight Club, though, so I can't really say that. You've never seen Fight Club? No. no. We can't talk about Fight Club because that's the first rule. But you need to watch Fight Club. I mean, I heard that, yeah. But. You need to watch Fight Club. Then we can talk. I was not a very big uh, Brad Pitt fan until he did that show with Leonardo DiCaprio, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh yeah, yeah, he's really good in that. Actually, to be honest, both of them in that one, I yeah. had a whole different opinion of him after that movie. He has a lot of really good roles, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> kind of over time, like World War Z. I thought he was oh, yeah, really good. He pulled off he pulled off the action that. role really good yeah. in a very believable way. Then he was in the, the uh, Money Ball. The other horror movie, not a horror movie, but it was uh, was it California? I think it was with a K. Oh right, yep, yep. Anyway, he's got a bit. Of, trust me, I'd recommend Money Ball. I just saw no, that. Uh, take it back. Really. It was it was not California. I'm thinking of Woody no. Harrelson. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, um, yeah. Let me see. Let's just rambling through. like an old man here. You know, we got it. We, 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 you know, we got to do. What we, we're like coming. I didn't care for Ad Astra, the one that he, that the space one that he was recently in. I seen like movies. Not his fault. I just didn't care for the movie. He was in Twelve Monkeys, man. He was in Twelve Monkeys. Oof, that was a great film, and he is fantastic in Twelve Monkeys. I didn't see it. <gasps> I'll, have to, I'll have to watch it. Okay. Fight Club and 12 Monkeys need to go on your list. We need to have a talk okay. about those movies. They are both, they're both, trust me, 12 Monkeys is going to be right up your alley. You are really going to like that movie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. And you know, he has the uh, the dubious role of being in Deadpool 2. Did you know? Uh, yes, I did. Know that, yeah. Okay. All right. Make it sure we're clear. Very important. Yeah. yeah. Y'all know he was in Deadpool 2 as yeah, a manager. Uh, he has a great role in actually The Big Short, possibly one of my most underrated films of all time. I think he did get nominated for some Oscar type stuff, but I don't think it won much. Uh, absolutely a must watch for people who are normies when it comes to finances and how markets and stuff works and how the housing market works. Because The Big Short movie, at least it's like a digestible way to kind of get yourself educated on how some of it works. That's obviously a movie, I mean, a book that it's based on. 
He also right. did a war. Uh, how are we going to find Brad Pitt? We're talking about Meatloaf. We don't want Brad Pitt. Oh, and, you, you uh, just switched gears. I know. Well, it's because these are good movies. So I've, I'm trying to give you like a Brad Pitt like movie watch marathon. It and, went from it went from Fight Club that had Meatloaf in it and Brad yeah. Pitt. Yeah. And yeah. Just... Fight Club, Twelve Monkeys, Big <laughs> Short, and the last one would be Fury, the war movie that he was in. About tanks. It's almost like the multiverse in Loki. It just took off on a different. No, 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 no. You don't get to do those kinds of things. Drop Loki reference. Loki is a four letter word in a lot more ways than just the number of letters, my friend. So, RIP Meatloaf. Um, and so yeah, love going out to Brad Pitt. Who knew we were going to squeeze Brad Pitt in? That was bizarre <laughs> and strange. May I have to figure out that thumbnail. That'll be a little weird. Try to figure out a thumbnail. Have R.I.P. me look with like Brad Pitt in the corner going, yeah, well, don't forget about me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do there. I've been enjoying trying to learn how to do thumbnails and try to get better at it or whatever, make them interesting. And people will say different things. I'm like, well, it entertained me. I mean, I don't care if you liked it. I mean, what am I doing this for? Because if I'm not having fun. I'm not going to want to do it. So I'm trying to be entertained. So that's something else. So I must be doing something right, my friend, because um, I did another Hawkeye video on our news talk show last week. I and saw. I had, and, uh, you know, Alex is definitely the normie. He's definitely the Marvel, you know, the guy who wants to go and see them all, that kind of thing. And uh, posted this and got some comments. And the guy was not happy with my with my take on things. Uh, he was talking about. Uh, Ronin and the Avengers, and I, I, I just didn't catch these things. I just didn't get these things. Like, see that. Here's my favorite line of the first comment was the montage of Kate training was necessary so fans like you wouldn't whine about where she gets all her skills. I'm like, well, because she's just some rando who's shooting bows and arrows, maybe at the Olympic level, not at the superhero level. I definitely don't see any training that would qualify her to be able to hold her own against, you know six 200 pound men with weapons running at her literally within a couple of years it's so ridiculous anyway and it would just he just goes through all these different things i had you read through some of the comments i did i read them yeah and then i tried to respond i was trying to be polite and respond in a pretty detailed way and then the guy wrote like a thesis and it's absolutely insane i am not responding to all this kind of stuff so do you have any initial thoughts on where I'm off base. Help me out here. Convince well, me how much better Hawkeye this. it is. Yeah, no, we discussed this before. And I I did like Hawkeye, like like we had said. You know, there were little things that we agreed on that were, you know, way over the top. But um, I see his point in the sense that, you know, we can't get too caught up in the details. But for you and I, that details is where it's at because – we're we're comic book fans so we we kind of know where the stories are coming from we kind of know what you know so this he's just speaking from a, a ground level kind of person i would think doesn't sound like he he really knows a lot about the past he's only telling us about what he saw in the show i think you a know? lot of what he thinks he saw is not he didn't actually see it it's just in his head he thinks he sees right it, or he's letting them off the, ho the hook because he wants it to be good and wants to like what's going on so right and sometimes people fill the blanks in their mind you know well then it's head knowledge and head canon. it's not actually what happened in the show i'm not giving them credit it's like welcome okay, to well, social media yeah it's like i'm not giving them credit for Let's just presume he's right. And like, let's say Iron Man should have been more injured. Other human, first of all, I don't even know how this guy could have this stance and not be able to sit through Black Widow because Black Widow is probably the most unbelievable of all of the Marvel films because they're all humans, but every right. single human in this film would have their arms and limbs, arms and legs and backs all broken and damaged with nearly every sure. action sequence. It's so absurd. They treat them all like superheroes and none of them. Like right they were all doing shots of super serum before they. Uh, that's correct. And none of that's there. true. Uh, but that's pretty much how they treat Kate Bishop in this. Like Alex's take on new stock was, well, I wouldn't have liked it if it was about Kate Bishop. I really liked the Hawkeye part. And I'm like, the whole show was just Kate Bishop. What are you talking about? And literally the Kingpin shows up and fights Kate Bishop and not Hawkeye. I was so ticked off that we went through all the trouble. Yeah. To have Kingpin. Well, I think he, he looked at it like I looked at it. We actually did the little bit of storyline that Hawkeye had. We enjoyed it. Sure. Clint Barton. Yeah. I like the Clint Barton yeah. storyline. So, yes. I mean, exactly. I, I, give so, credit when you I think that's what he was more aiming towards is that he, he, 
you know, for someone that looks at it like that, it, it is a Hawkeye show, but we know that Kate Bishop was the focus of it. You yeah, know? there was no, nothing, nothing relevant to Hawkeye mattered, right? He didn't, no. they didn't know where the Ronin stuff was and the watch. If these things matter so much, there's no way Clint just went back to his life, goes to see the Avengers musical and all that. We don't have these answers resolved. Like, I understand they're try he tried to he tried to make allusions in his comments about you know what we saw in like uh, Spider-Man films right. and, I, and I'm like all right well kind of I mean I kind of see what you're saying but no it's not there on screen a lot of that is stuff in your head it didn't actually happen right. so the Ronin sword in particular everyone's just very flippant that it all shows up and then Kate Bishop wears a tux to a formal event and then be able to pretend to be a waiter who wandered into a black market event to get the Ronin suit and the Ronin suit actually fits and the absurdity of all that to kick off the show long before we get to her falling 30 feet and not having a scratch. Right. So for that snippet, you know, and again, it, it just requires speculation is that, you know, Hawkeye, I would think, you know, once the blip was over and everybody came back, he probably thought the suit was disposed of because, you know, there, you know, whatever was left of shield was, was gathering that stuff and, and who knows what they were doing with it. So, you know, he may have been under the impression that that was. Maybe, maybe I missed a line. Maybe they said a line that I missed. I, I don't remember. I don't think line. they did. I don't think they did, but I think I'm I just trying to hypothesize a little bit. That's all that, you know, for him not knowing because he is you know definitely would have been someone that would have been aware of okay where is this at so it, i can only speculate that maybe in his mind you know when they came back after that was all solved somebody was taking this stuff and in, in, in either storing it somewhere or disposing of it somehow in his mind and here you know so the other aspect the other thing is so k bishop with the the black market auction I don't think she stumbled upon it. I think she was intending to go to it, to sneak into it, because she she must have heard something about that maybe there was something there she was looking for, or she was trying to get her mom's boyfriend to see what kind of nonsense he's up to, because she never did trust him either. Okay, right. I mean, I know she's following him. I, I can agree with that latter part. I don't think she has any knowledge of what she's getting herself into. And she um, may not. She may not. But... But I know she doesn't like him, and she was trying to see what he's up to because she didn't right. trust That's him. That part I agree with. That's what got her, that, and that's what she's trying to accomplish. Is she's dressed like a waiter to sneak right. in. I got all that, but um, maybe the Ronin suit was just an afterthought when she. Uh, yeah, it's an afterthought. Right? These writers didn't know what to do to get her in a Ronin suit, but that's what they did. Ronin. Yeah, yeah so shady writers need to go back to where they came from because they stink. Clear, clear as mud. I. The guy really had a hard time with my analysis of Kingpin and the mom, the mom being more powerful than Kingpin. I'm like, wait, she's the one that hired the Black Widow, right? Because it was at the end, she's the one that goes to jail. She's the one that killed the de the, the new boyfriend's dad. She's the one that did all these things. Kingpin is who she's indebted to. And then she mouths all the Kingpin. The Kingpin didn't do anything to her. Oh, I got some dirt on you, Kingpin. I'm like, he's the Kingpin. I, It's fine. I mean, it's fine. I understand we just got to have him, but... Oh, I hate the show. I didn't hate it as much as other shows. I just didn't like it. And it's not because I'm sexist. I only I hate all that juvenile, wishy-washy garbage. Like, that's an argument. Oh, you don't like girls. I love Natasha Romanoff's story, especially sure. those early films. Oh, my gosh. The Avengers scene, that interrogation scene was some of the best of the NCU, right? Uh, her interrogating Loki. You know, um, her in Winter Soldier. Her in Iron Man 2. That yeah. was all fine. That was all good. Black Widow, she just got the job, man. Poor, you know what? I know Scarlett Johansson sued for some cash. She deserved more just because she got robbed of having a decent film because right. that was garbage for how they treated her character. Yeah. Marvel Phase 4 is giving me a bunch of terrible, crappy women to cheer for as some of my female her characters. I don't like any of these people. I don't understand what who I'm supposed to cheer for. I like Hawkeye's wife. Does that count? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. She's a hero. Okay, I count I count her because I yeah. don't like Lady Loki. She's a complete yeah. witch, arrogant, nasty narcissist. Who do we get then? I can't stand what Sharon Carter. She betrays everybody. We're supposed to believe she's the the, the dealer behind the scenes. I don't believe it one right. bit. Or does it contradicts yeah. 
two or three other episodes. I hated Freckle Jesus, basically the uh, terrorist. Oh, yeah. no. people. Couldn't stand that character. Hated every bit of, mm-hmm. of it. Don't even get me started on What If, where we had to sit through a uh, an experiment gone bad that basically put. Uh, how did I hear the one guy in Neurotic say? He said basically they put Peggy Carter's head on Steve Rogers' body in this horrible uh, accident experiment gone bad. Right. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. And then we got this Kate Bishop, who's supposed to be in her 20s, who seems like she's 12 at times, never gets a scratch on her because she's the best archer ever. Oh, I don't know, man. I, I, I understand there are Marvel stands. You're not a Marvel stand because at least you can be critical and you can still also be intellectually honest. I, I, I can see all the problems with it, but still be entertained. And I'm in the same boat. Right. I can have that at times. But sometimes right, right. These, these plot holes are like, um, they're like potholes in the road. They're so massive. I can't not hit them with my car. I can't hit them with, I, there's, I can't get around them. Well, I'm hoping um, we have something good come from uh, She-Hulk. <laughs> You're still making on She-Hulk. I I'm actually can that. say Moon Knight at least has some intriguing elements that set it up. Right. The problem is, is Moon Knight is this got this crazy, complicated comic book history with like three or four different iterations and right. who he was and what he was and all that. So I don't know what we're gonna get with that, but I'm okay to try. I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think. I had on the tip of my tongue. I had another female uh, hero uh, from. I don't know if it was phase three or four, but then I, I lost it when I was talking about the other thing. We had, we had, well, we had, we had the ones from the movies. So we had Yelena, right? We had the girl. We had the new Black Widow. And she's this cocky Black Widow who's not nearly as serious as Natasha is and runs like a duck. Then you have, um, who else do we get? Shang-Chi. We get Shang-Chi's sister. She's in charge of the rings now, the ring organization. So we get Shang-Chi's sister. We have Katie. I supposed to cheer for Katie. Right. right. Can, we Katie, can we have a Katie spinoff? Like Agatha, Agatha from. Scarlet oh, that's Witch. what I was thinking. Uh, Scarlet Witch. They turned her into a villain. Yeah, but not for long. She always flip flop back and forth in a comic book. So. I like uh, her she as a villain. I just wanted to I be able to call her. her a villain. Yeah, I do like her a lot, and I did like Agatha Harkness. I didn't like Agatha Harkness at all. I I, I will say this about Wanda. Wanda is <laughs> when she's mental. She's an interesting comic book character when she's insane. Like when she's in the X-Men comic books and she's nuts and she's killing people and stuff. And she basically destroys the Marvel universe at one point. I mean, there's some cool, crazy stuff that happens. I just don't, nobody wants me to call her. I get, I get, I get attacked if I call her a villain. I'm like, but she is a villain at this point. I mean, you know, it's fine. I understand her heart is in the right place. Maybe instead of villain, maybe anti-hero. She's not. She's a villain. She brings no, she controlled a, a whole town full of people. It's awful. Yeah. And Agatha Harkness. What kind of weird spinoff was that? That's a weird spinoff. I don't know. I don't understand where that's going. This is and that's that didn't a character. Come out here, right? No. 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 Yeah. Miss Marvel got delayed. But Agatha, she's got um, she's quite a quite a uh, a storyline in the comic books. I mean, she's been around a long time. Yeah, you know, most of it was very uneventful nonsense, right? Most of it was a Fantastic she's Four more type of an antagonist. Thing. She was she more might an set antagonist. up the Fantastic Four. That would actually be at least somewhat redempting if they right. tie, because he is the one that's in charge of uh, taking care of the baby, right? When they have to go fight superheroes, she's in charge of the baby a lot of times. Yeah, and she's in some of the like I said, stuff. she's an antagonist. She she triggers a lot of. A yeah, because she has ties to like what Jathan and uh, well Mephisto, of course, but that's not right. going to happen. So. Um, yeah. yeah, so there's all that. Uh, we have the Eternals. I could cheer for some of them, right? Sure. Yeah, Captain right. Marvel 2 coming out. Space Karen. The Return yeah. of Space Karen. That's what I wanted to be called. I wanted to be called Captain Marvel 2 with Roman numerals, colon, The Return of Space Karen. There you go. And, and, and it's funny watching... because my brother is a huge Captain Marvel fan. Oh my gosh. And when I start, when I start, my my critique of uh of brie he gets all bent out of shape so she is uh, such an unlikable person on social media and stuff have you ever seen any of her videos and stuff nobody likes her nobody likes I can't, her i've I tried to like her and she's so unlikable and abrasive and and if you ever get a shrill. chance to see uh, that that between two ferns did you ever see that 
I've seen a couple episodes. Uh, when, he, when she's on there and he's like, okay, your parents got divorced at a, when you were a child. Um, how did it make you feel knowing that that was completely your fault? You know? <laughs> oh, wow. That's a great line. And, you know, okay. so, you know how to how them naming you after a cheese, you know. I thought, that's good. That's another good one. <laughs> I thought of the only female character I don't hate. I don't like what they did with the character because she's not the character in the comic book. Monica Rambeau is okay. Oh, yeah. I can go yeah. with Monica Rambeau. They skipped sure. over. They 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 totally skipped over and shortchanged her on how good she is in comic book. She's a great comic book character. Right. Uh, that's why I can't stand. Oh, there's no women in comic books. A black character in comic book. She dates yeah. back to when I was hardcore in the Avengers. She was a key element. Yeah. There's a really good comic book cover out there. I wish I knew the number. Hopefully they uh, hopefully they explore her more. They use her more. Well, in the Marvels, she has to share time with all the other ladies. Oh, that's so I'm not oh, sure okay. she's going to get any more time with, because Space Karen's yeah. got to be in everything, right? So, of course. Yeah. Of course. So, yeah. Well, all right. Well, we, we you know, we gave DC a little bit of time. There was one other story, but I don't think we're going to have time, so I'll have to table it for next time. Uh, G.I. Joe and Transformers, Hasbro pulled their comic book license to IDW, so it's kind of like an independent comic book. Really? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're so obnoxious now. Let me see if I can pull up the one photo. This is insane. So they wonder why this stuff turns south when you're doing this. This was a couple of years ago. It's not like it just happened. All right. Let me get that uh, share for you. This is a, this is a variant G.I. Joe comic book that they basically do this crap just to make headlines. Can you see this? This homoerotic nonsense. make it bigger yeah they bring in a queer writer this is what he does this straddling nonsense yeah, and it's like crazy they do this stuff just to you know to get clicks to get headlines and whatever and i i don't know i don't know man so anyway, i don't know if they said all that but you know you can't be ruining gi joe like that this that's just one issue there's another one with a uh an obese lesbian. Basically, she's in G.I. Joe. Let me see if I got that here. Hmm. Uh, that's not a good... Well, it's kind of... You can kind of see it. I mean, the problem I have with the sharing thing is it's like... But you don't kind of have it, like, pre-tested. It doesn't always work real well. Right. Mm, no, control. There you go. You see her right here? Yeah. Yeah, she got through the G.I. Joe. She's leading the G.I. Joe. It's not an issue. It's just awful. It's awful crap, man. Which, you know, doesn't make much sense. So they, they've pulled their license. They've done that. No surprise to me that all these comic books do this kind of, you know, you know, go woke, get woke, go broke. So yep. IW, you deserve everything you get and then some. Um, and I hope that uh, you never get licensing back and you can uh, you can get, pay the recompense for ruining characters because... These are franchises we grew up on, man. We love this kind of stuff. And I wasn't a huge yeah, G.I. Joe fan, but I love Transformers. No, I, either, but... I love Transformers. I don't know much about what they did with the Transformers, so I didn't bring it up. They did lots of Transformers, too. So maybe they did the same kind of garbage with Transformers. I don't know. Because I love Transformers, man. Oh, gosh, I love Transformers. They were so You know, I did, too. And, you know, it was pretty... Um... It was pretty amazing to see it the very first time they brought it to the big screen. Mm -hmm. in uh, in live action form you know with the it just it was just you'd never really seen anything like that before so and they kept was, the voice uh, of optimus prime so the first the first movie yeah. was so much fun because of all that sure you know it was great and the uh like i like i was telling somebody the other day about the spider-man i think my brother and i were discussing it you know the very first spider-man that we saw with toby mcguire not that it was that great of a movie i mean it was a good movie but we hadn't had anything like that before. Yeah. You know, and that was the precursor to stuff like Iron Man and, and things like that with the, the way things were, were done on the screen. And it was just amazing, you know, yeah, not to date myself, but it was just like X-Men and X-Men right. 2, same thing, right? We saw this stuff getting right. adapted and came to like Blade. Blade was the same way. Blade was like this big groundbreaking film. We all forget about it. It's like right. those movies just gave us so much uh, love and hope and spawn great movies and, and stuff like that and we all got this great stuff later on so 
Yeah, I, and I, I you know, I actually saw Star Wars the very first one in the in the movie theaters. I was a, I was a kid, and you know, being nine or ten, sitting in a movie theater and having this these words come across the screen and then cut to this ship in the space. There was nothing like that graphically. No, no it blew you me know, away. So I saw it. You ready? See. How many times do you think I saw Star Wars in the theater? This was interesting. What, what, maybe ten or twelve. Oh, I wish, I wish. Seven. Seven, seven, okay. Seven. I remember like about the third or fourth time I would have arguments with other kids about certain scenes. So yep. literally I'm like, you know, in elementary school fighting over Star Wars details. I was yeah. such an uber nerd for Star Wars. I knew like the back of every trading card. So I knew all these details. We would try yeah. to petition the lunch ladies for all of the Wonder Bread cards. Remember the Wonder Bread cards? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there was so much money if you had them in mint condition it's it's insane so yeah, oh, yeah it's one of those things you know when like christopher something... reeve superman christopher reeve superman oh, yeah, absolutely. oh my gosh and i still love that music i love him mm -hmm. then of course they fall with superman 2 which is even better i'm like oh my gosh this is incredible this is so good yeah you know, we, we have these uh, memories we don't want to see all this stuff that's why we get so ticked off when, when they ruin it they're, you know they're taking this yeah. crap away from us yeah so because people don't feel like it. You're not, they think you we're just for snickety old guys, but really, you know, this is the kind of stuff we that came out when we were younger, and we, we was want to share it with their kids and our grandkids, and it's like yeah, well, it's not the same thing. Like it's just, it's like the new Star Wars trilogy. It's like, well, you murdered or all of the original characters that mattered are yeah. horrible humans or irrelevant. Like, okay, thanks for that. That's not the story arc that we wanted to go out on. Yep, we left know. them all when they were heroic. Now we have Han the bad dad, Leia that's the bad general, and Luke that's a recluse living on blue milk, yeah. green milk, whatever it was. It's like, this is awful. And it's like, in hindsight, I kept trying to defend, going, let's give them a chance, let's give them a chance. And all they did was kept getting it worse, they kept getting worse and kept getting worse. And it's like, now it's just such an abomination. I don't even know what to say. And these TV yep. shows. Oh, I jingled the keys. Okay. Boba Fett, though. I didn't get to watch it. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it when you do. There's no yeah. Boba Fett on my Boba Fett show. People get mad at me when I, I point out some of the details. And like, yeah, you're wrong. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. He yeah. carries a blaster around, Rob. He just doesn't ever shoot anybody with it. But he carries one around. Yeah, that's what I've been reading in different areas. Yeah, he just doesn't shoot anybody. And if you ever wonder what the Power Rangers in Star Wars would kind of look or maybe feel like a little bit, they found this way of kind of giving you at least a snapshot of what that could be. And it's that's so it's so insanely bad. I'm actually hoping that they don't realize how bad it is and they do a spinoff on just those characters. I want those oh, four oh characters to have their own because I want it to I want them to I want it to get so bad it can't come back. They have to at least sell it or or license it or do something to someone that right. cares about it so it, it, this can stop they bring right. a rancor in do you have you read what they did to the rancor no it's depressed rob he pets it because it's his pet okay yeah it comes in with like a muzzle and it's sad so he gives a little pat pat Hang in there, little rancor. Oh, if that owns you now. Oh, my God. I'm not making this crap up, man. They try to tell me to, I'm supposed to be happy to, on this. I'm going to have to cut out some time to, to watch oh, it. That's so bad. So, yeah. Anyway. Well, Rob. We've come, an covered a number of topics tonight, Brandon. We did. We have, we'll, we'll have some clips. We'll have some clips and some fun time. Yeah. It's always fun to talk. Right. I wish we had right. uh, a chance to do it more often. I know it's tough yeah. with our schedules and stuff like that, but you know, it's always good to catch up. Gives you got a lot of homework now. It's going to be Brad Pitt night. We're going to have to have Brad Pitt night. Yeah. So we'll run down yeah, the four Pitt. movies that Rob hasn't even seen. How well, we Gen Z, uh, Gen was it Gen Z? No, what was the? Uh... World War Z. World War Z, that one. Yeah, I saw that one. I actually liked that one a lot. Um, so I'll have to, uh, I'll have to watch Fight Club and I'll have we'll to have watch uh, 12 Fight Monkeys. Club, 12 Monkeys, Big Short, Big Short, and Moneyball. Moneyball, okay. 
You have to text it to me later. None of those four movies are remotely similar. That's the best part of this. It's like sci-fi, apocalyptic, Fight Club, this this bizarre drama, uh, this heavy like economic drama film, Big Short, and then Moneyball, which is a sports movie. None okay. of them were, it's like a biography. It's like none of them were remotely similar. And he's not like... It's not like an actor that having to stretch in these roles, except for 12 Monkeys, 12 Monkeys. Well, Fight Club is too. Fight Club's got a lot of stretch, uh, but not like 12 Monkeys. 12 Monkeys may be one of his best roles ever. It's so okay. freaking good. The movie's so good. I have to start with that one. Bruce Willis. Oh, yeah. You're going to love this movie. Yeah, You're going to love 12 Monkeys. You're going to love Fight Club. I, I hope that you'll like Big Short and Moneyball like I do, because you can appreciate good acting and good storytelling and stuff like that. Right, so, right. I really enjoyed, uh, um, what was it, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Absolutely yes. loved it. We should do a whole, I can do a whole bit. I actually story. reported a whole whole interview with them, with someone, yeah. and uh, it didn't, I guess it didn't take or something, it corrupted. So whoever were listening live heard it, but I couldn't get a copy to post. And I have all right. these notes, I have all these notes and all this stuff put together. I've never done, because that movie is so good on so oh, many man. levels and it's like you have to kind of break it down for people who don't know any of the story and the history and what tarantino did well i think that's what made it so much more fun is because you knew the history of that mm-hmm. time period mm-hmm. and you know you knew just how absurd it was that you know they went to the wrong house you know <laughs> well it was just it, it's 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 so good and then you get to this one point it's like but what if they went to the neighbor's house right would everything have changed right because the manson thing it changed all of hollywood it changed the type of movies that we get into it kind of ended those that type of you know actor and kind of went in a different direction it kind of had like a, that 70s filmmaker there's a roman polanski lived next door it's like this is right, his yeah. house so i don't know all of it is so brilliant some people got it i'm not sure most people we were interested in trying to understand how to get it like it's almost like work at that point right. so yeah i love it i haven't watched yeah, it yeah. A lot, but i need to watch it again absolutely all well, right good, my friend have a good night good week my friend you too have a good night man